This is the Dell Venue 8 7000, the world's thinnest tablet and also the world's worst name for a tablet. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at each area of this device to see if its unique features are worth your money here on PhoneDog. Hey, what is up, Phone Dogs? Bo HD here, and this is the Dell Venue 8 7000. Now, from a hardware standpoint, there's actually a lot to love about this tablet, and there's also a lot to dislike. So first of all, it's crafted with a machined aluminum design. So you have a very premium, cool to the touch aluminum design that sort of wraps around the back and sides of the device, and it actually feels really good. It's not too slick or too slimy. Now there is also a glossy plastic section at the bottom of the tablet, and on the back it's glossy and has an eight megapixel camera sensor implanted into the center. And I presume there's some antennas hidden in here as well, since I don't really see any of them on the top of the tablet. But this plastic section really picks up a lot of fingerprints and smudges. I think it would really look better if they just extended the aluminum all the way down to the bottom of the tablet. The plastic portion of the bottom does reach around to the front of the tablet where you will find the stereo speakers and front facing 2 megapixel camera sensor that is a bit oddly positioned at the bottom. But that's mostly because of the thin bezels that wrap around the 8.4 inch OLED display that looks really good but does make it a little bit more challenging to hold in the hand, something that I will definitely talk about more in a moment. Because if we continue around the sides of the tablet, we will find that it does have a micro SD card slot on the right hand side for expandable storage, and there is a micro USB charging port and 3.5mm headphone jack on the bottom. Now the power sleep on off button and volume rocker is located on the left hand side and the buttons are made of aluminum. However, they are almost flush with the side panels so they aren't very clicky and can be a little bit more challenging to locate them when you pick up the tablet and try to use it. When you power this tablet on though, the display will probably blow you away as it's an OLED panel with a 1600 by 2560 pixel resolution and a 359 pixel per inch index pixel density. It's not the most saturated OLED panel I've seen, for example it's not as vivid as a Samsung panel, however compared to an LCD panel which is what we generally see on tablets, it's definitely more sharp and contrasty. The whites are very white, they don't have any yellow tint or blue tint to them. The display is very color accurate, especially for an OLED display. And I think the display is really the best feature of this tablet, and it really does look good with those minimal bezels around the top and sides of the display. But where you start to run into some trouble is actually using the tablet with those small bezels. There's just not a lot of room to grip the tablet. You kind of have to think about it and really be cautious that you don't accidentally touch the display when you are holding it. So because of this, it kind of takes away from the experience tablets should offer, and that is just quick on-the-go access to information. But as for the software itself, it's great in that it's a near-stock Android experience. Stock Android 4.4.4 KitKat, that is. Android 5.0 Lollipop is scheduled to be released for this tablet, but we do have to wait for it, and I don't have an exact date. And if you guys know me, I hate waiting, especially when I've been running Android 5.0 Lollipop on my Nexus 6 and my Nexus 9 for several months now. I just have a real problem going back to Android KitKat since I just love stock Android 5.0 Lollipop so much. But with that said, KitKat really ain't bad. You have the drop down notification panel on the left and the quick settings to the right. One thing I did when I first powered on this tablet for the first time was install the Google Play Launcher just so I can get that creamy transition into Google Now from the home screen. But in terms of performance, we have an Intel Atom quad core processor clocked at 2.3 gigahertz with two gigabytes of RAM inside. And to my surprise, it's actually very zippy opening and closing applications. I compared it to the Nexus 9 running Android 5.0 Lollipop and it was actually faster in a lot of ways. I mean, you can watch that video here or by clicking on the link in the description bar if you'd like. The biggest problem really is booting up games as it takes a while to load games. However, games do run well once they have loaded and they look especially great on that beautiful display. The Dell Venue 8 7000 does also have an impressive stereo speaker on the bottom portion of the tablet. And yeah, I say impressive because it really does sound good. For the world's thinnest tablet, you really wouldn't think there would be much space to add some quality speakers, but they sound crisp and clear. My only complaint is that the sound only resonates from one side of the tablet. There's no speaker grill up top, so when you're watching YouTube videos, it's as if the sound only comes from one side. 
so it kind of throws off the immersive experience a little bit. The camera on this tablet is unique in that it features Intel RealSense 3D technology with two 720p capable cameras along with an 8 megapixel camera sensor, so you have a total of three camera sensors on the back. The purpose is to capture depth in the images you capture, but the feature is not currently available, so it says it'll be available in a future software update, so that is pretty disappointing. The picture quality in itself is also really not very good at all. Low light is terrible, there's just a ton of noise, but well lit scenarios will deliver better results of course. The battery life of the Dell Venue 8 7000 is fantastic, somehow Dell managed to pack a 5900mAh battery inside of here, and yeah, it lasts a long time. For example, the time on battery you see here is from moderate use and many hours of standby time, and as you can see, there's still a good amount of battery life left. Now the Dell Venue 8 7000 costs $400 for the Wi-Fi version. For that price, you get the world's thinnest tablet. You also get a tablet that's constructed well with machined aluminum with a unique and aesthetically pleasing modern design that emphasizes the OLED display up front. With that said, the design has its faults. It's not the easiest tablet to hold with one hand as the bezels are incredibly narrow and also the buttons aren't very tactile. The display is certainly the wow feature of this tablet as it looks amazing, has great viewing angles, is crisp and vibrant and just beautiful to look at. And also the large battery is very nice as you can use this tablet for hours upon hours and not really have to worry about having to charge it. So all of those reasons make this tablet very appealing. I think once Android 5.0 Lollipop is officially available for the Dell Venue 8 7000 and the Intel RealSense 3D camera software is implemented, I think this will be a much more well-rounded tablet and will certainly be much more appealing for more people. But right now, I think there are better options out there on the market, but Dell is definitely on the way for creating a very successful tablet. It's just a few design tweaks away and software updates away from creating a really unbeatable Android tablet experience, but right now, it's just not quite there. So with that said, that is my review of the Dell Venue 8 7000. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, but uh, as always, I'm BoHD from PhoneDog.com. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. See ya.